Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block. Thank you for joining me again for another week where I share with you a tip on how to create a healthier indoor environment at home. Um, this week we're going to talk about VOCs. So this is kind of just a common term. A lot of times it's just thrown about and maybe we don't really know what it is or how to prevent it in our homes. We just know that we shouldn't have it. So we're going to do kind of a deep dive into this particular type of toxin. So there are, I'm going to share with you nine of the most common VOCs that are in the indoor air inside of our homes and how we can prevent those um, from being in our homes or how we can limit them. Um, exposure to VOCs is inevitable. They're outdoors and they're indoors. There's no way that you can actually prevent coming in contact with them. But what we can do is limit them in our homes. And the reason it's so important in our homes is because inside the air doesn't um, get diluted as often as it should uh, because our homes are much more energy efficient and we have them closed up probably more often than we should and so the VOCs can become really concentrated in our indoor air and so what we want to do is limit the VOCs inside um, by you know, preventing bringing them in, obviously. But then there's also a couple other things we can do, like ventilate, to really dilute that indoor air. So I'm going to walk you through everything today. But first, we're going to talk about um, what are VOCs, where do they come from, and why they're important to limit in our homes when it comes to health risks. So there have been a lot of valid studies and research papers done that have linked VOCs to a variety of health problems um, depending on the VOC that is being off-gassed in the home. So it's really important that we pay attention to these to prevent things like increased risk of cancer, um, liver damage, kidney damage. I'm going to go through all of that in this week's slides. So why don't we get started? All right, you guys. So let's dive in. Um, I think a really popular term is VOC free, but a lot of times we just don't know what that is. So we're going to go over it in detail today so that we understand it um, on a, a higher level. And then we can also um, get rid of it and prevent it in our homes. I think we have to understand what it is, where it comes from, how it works in order to reduce it. So let's get started here. First, I think let's um, let's find out what are VOCs, right? Um, so what are VOCs? Certain products in your homes, both solids and liquids can emit a gas called a volatile organic compound. Um, VOCs are present indoors and outdoors and they are, um, they're leading to health impacts, um, because they're in concentrated, um, amounts in our homes. So VOCs are a carbon containing substance um, that vaporize at room temperature. They are released into the air by a material or product. Um, the VOC can sometimes have an odor that's emitted with it, but not always. Um, the compounds that are released are usually unstable, which means that certain circumstances can determine how much gas they release into the air. And often these circumstances are temperature and humidity, which we actually have control of in our homes. Um, so there's also, there can be like a wide range of how a VOC is produced in the air as well. So some materials will off gas for like a short amount of time and some will off gas at low levels continuously. Um, there is also really no good way to um, measure VOCs. And the reason for this is that many VOCs are measured with different methods because they're actually a different compound. So in order to test for VOCs in your own space, you probably need to have like a several devices or like a professional. And then the other thing that I think it's really important to understand is that um, VOCs are in different classifications. So there is very volatile. So this is VVOC. There's volatile organic compounds, which is what we generally talk about, VOCs. And then there are semi-volatile um, organic compounds. And the classification is based on like the volatility of the compounds, which is based on their boiling point. And then this determines how much they off-gas under normal air pressure. Um, I think it's also important to point out that the problem with VOCs 
uh, in general is that the level indoors is often two to five times higher than outdoors. Um, So now that we know what they are, let's take a look at where are they coming from. Um, There are hundreds of VOCs, both in nature and in our homes. um, And there are some VOCs that are more harmful than others because they exist at room temperature, which means um, we're almost always being exposed to them. These are often the VOCs that we talk about in our homes, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So where do these VOCs come from? First, let's talk paint and stains. Um, So paint, stains, and varnishes are commonly, they commonly all contain VOCs. Um, They typically off-gas with an odor emitted, but not always. VOCs are used in these products to improve the quality of the product as well as the performance. And generally, these products off-gas the most while they're being used, um, but they can emit low levels of VOCs constantly. Um, Most products list the level of VOCs that are emitted um, from the, they're on the product label. Um, And you can find that out like on a paint can or something like that. Um, Another area is carpet and flooring. So carpet and flooring in general um, has quite, they, it has a lot of VOCs. Um, Formaldehyde, benzene, ethylene glycol are all common VOCs that are emitted from flooring and carpet. Um, in carpet, the main problem is the backing. And then in flooring, a lot of times the culprit is often like the adhesives used in the installation or the manufacturing, like if it's pressed wood that needs to be glued together. Um, in general, most flooring products off gas the most right away, but low levels can continue to off-gas over time. Next is composite wood. So this is like plywood, um, particle board, medium density, fiber board, or MDF is what we call it sometimes. Um, A lot of times they have strong adhesives and glue um, in the product. Formaldehyde is um, what is used to ensure the product's like durability, um, and it's one of the more known VOCs that can off-gas for years after it is um, made, and um, composite wood is used in so many applications in our home, um, from like the building materials to our furniture, that we are being constantly exposed. I share in this week's blog post um, a link to another post I did that goes through some alternatives to healthy composite wood products that use um, things other than strong solvent adhesives that contain VOCs if you're interested. Um, And then the next one is cosmetics and perfumes. So um, let's think like synthetic nail, uh, synthetic fragrance, nail polish, nail removers, hairsprays, hairstyling products, they all contain VOCs. Um, These types of products generally emit VOCs the most when they're being used, but they can also um, off-gas while they're being stored. Usually the VOCs present in cosmetics are toluene, um, ethanol, xylene, and acetone. Um, They are there to help um, preserve the products. A lot of times they're there to help keep the products from separating. And then some VOCs are added to help the product adhere to like our skin and nails. So think like nail polish and hairspray. Um, and then adhesives and glues is, we kind of talked about this a little bit with the composite wood, but this is another big one in our home. So, um, Anything from craft glue to industrial adhesives usually contain VOCs. The most common VOC in adhesives and glues is formaldehyde and nitrogen oxides, which generally off-gas the most during the curing process um, while the product is drying. VOCs um, help the product be a little bit more like easily workable. Um, They help it to be more fluid. Um, And then again, in the building process of our homes, many of these strong adhesives are used in a variety of applications. And so we're being exposed all the time to these VOCs. Um, The next thing is air fresheners and synthetic fragrances. So this is a big one and it's usually a pretty easy one to get rid of in your home. And I um, link a full blog post on how you can do this in your own home um, in this week's post. So fragrances are in so many of our everyday products. We probably don't even realize it. Um, There was a study done on like 25 different scented products and it showed that the average number of VOCs being emitted from just one product is 17 different VOCs. 
The most common in fragrance products are formaldehyde, ethanol, terpene, and acetone. Um, these VOCs are likely something you're being exposed to if you smell the fragrance, but again, not always. Um, and then let's look at upholstery and foam. This is like foam mattresses, um, foam in upholstery, but formaldehyde is, again, the most common VOC in furniture and foam. Um, benzene, methyl chloride, and toluene are also commonly used in foam. A lot of times it's that protective coating that's added to upholstery, which makes it more stain and moisture resistant. That's the problem. Um, and these products are the most concerning because... It's been found that VOCs in furniture foam off gas much more when the material is warm and when the material is in a humid climate, which our bodies produce moisture and um, heat. And so it makes a really conducive environment um, when we come in contact with furniture and foam in mattresses and cushions for it to off gas. And then the last thing is cleaning products. Um, this is along the lines of like our cosmetics, but cleaning products, um, it's a pretty broad term. And so the list of types of VOCs is almost endless when it com comes to this type of product. Um, the products are similar to beauty products. Again, that they mostly off gas while they're being used, but they can also emit VOCs when being stored. Um, formaldehyde is often used as a preservative in cleaning products. Um, and then other VOCs are used to improve the product's function as well as cover up some of those chemical odors. Um, so let's take a look at the top nine VOCs that are found in homes. Um, these are the big ones that we can try to avoid. So first, let's take a look at ethanol. Um, ethanol is the most common VOC in cosmetics, beauty products, um, and it helps to clean the skin and acts as a preservative. It's been linked to um, respiratory issues and um, it helps the VOCs are there to help it like adhere to the human body. So a lot of beauty products is what we can think about. Um, next, let's take a look at formaldehyde. Um, this one is probably the most common VOC that we talk about and the one that we know probably the most about. Um, it's used in a variety of applications from personal products to building materials. It acts as a preservative and as a bonding agent and has been linked to lifelong health issues with your sinuses, chronic respiratory system problems. Um, it's also a human carcinogen. Um, so that's one we really need to pay attention to because we are in contact with it a lot. Uh, the next one is methylene chloride. This is found in like a lot of varnishes and coatings. It can cause chronic dermatitis, um, also permanent nerve and liver damage. It's a possible carcinogen to humans, um, but they do need to do some more research on that one. And then let's take a look at acetone. This is one of those beauty products, um, or we see it a lot in beauty products. It is... Um, most commonly used is like a nail polish remover. Um, it is used to reduce the viscosity of solutions, um, and it also helps blend a variety of solutions together. Uh, acetone can cause issues with the blood as well as damage to the kidneys, liver, and nerves. So it's one we really want to steer clear of. Um, carbon disulfide is the next one, and this has been linked to reproductive effects, um, things like decreased sperm count, disturbances in the menstrual cycle. Um, it it also has been linked to neurological effects resulting in behavioral changes. Now, everything that I'm giving you as a health concern is linked in this week's blog post by um, to a source that um, has like a research paper linked to that. Um, so this next chemical, um, dichlorobenzene, is usually like a repellent for insects, rodents, a deodorizer um, for bathrooms, and like diaper pails a lot of times. Um, it's been linked to negative effects in the lungs, and then um, it creates problems with the blood cells, and specifically red blood count. Um, it can also cause damage to the liver and kidneys, and again, those those studies are linked in this week's um, post. Toluene is another one. It helps dissolve thick substances. It is a human carcinogen. Um, it has been linked to chronic effects on the central nervous system like tremors, involuntary eye movements, impaired speech, hearing, or vision, just kind of a slew of things that we don't want to happen in our bodies. So let's take a look at xylene. Um, xylene is uh, 
It's used in many glues, cleaning products, paints, sealants. Um, It's linked to chronic dermatitis, depression, headaches, um, insomnia, irritability, um, damage to the kidney and livers. It also has been linked um, to being a human carcinogen. And then last, we're going to talk about benzene. Um, Benzene is a very common VOC. It's highly flammable. It can cause anemia and issues with bone marrow, and it also is a human carcinogen. So these are the nine big ones that we can avoid um, when we're looking at all the products that we talked about before as well. So let's wrap it up with looking at how to reduce VOCs in your home. I have four very simple ways that we can um, really work to minimizing VOC exposure in our home. So first is to buy VOC free. This looks like um, being educated, doing your research before you buy. You can get low VOC, you can get zero VOC. Um, a lot of paints, varnishes, and sealers have VOC emissions labeled right on the can. Um, you can also look at Green Guard certified products, and um, you can also shop at stores or brands that support a more healthy lifestyle like limiting VOCs. The ones I have listed and I have them linked in this week's blog post if you would like them. Thrive Market, ECOS Paints, Green Design Center, Mighty Mighty Nest, um, and Avocado Mattress. I also in this week's blog post um, listed out a couple bigger purchase um, items that you might want to do research on that I have done the research for you on. So this would be mattresses, couches, flooring, plywood, adhesives, cleaning products, and paints. And those are all linked in this week's blog post if you follow the link. The other thing you can do at home is ventilate. So escaping all VOCs is nearly impossible. And because of the nature of our energy efficient homes, um, there's always going to be a level of VOCs in our house. Ventilating your home by opening windows and doors on a regular basis, as well as running vented fans or air to air exchangers, if you have them, is the best way to get um fresh air in and push toxic air out. Uh, Creating more and more air exchanges in your home is the best way to dilute toxin concentrated air in your house. Um, Another thing you can do is some climate control. So we know that air that is warm and has and is high in humidity levels creates um, an environment where VOCs will off gas at a much higher and more frequent rate. So keeping indoor relative humidity between 35 and 45 percent is ideal, not only for VOC emissions, but also for um, mold and dust mite control as well. And then the last thing you can do is um, purify your air. So I talked about this last week. In detail, I shared with you that I use Medify Air, but um, VOCs like formaldehyde um, specifically can be reduced with indoor air an indoor air purifier. You want to get one that has a medical grade HEPA filter, or um, sometimes it's called a true HEPA 13. Medify Air has this, so it filters out 99.9% of all particles down to 0.1 microns. Um, And so I have a coupon code um, in last week's blog post that you can find. I have it linked um, in this week's blog post if you'd like that, if you're looking to get an air purifier to help with some of these VOC emissions. Um, But understanding what VOCs are and their health effects is the first step to reducing the toxins in your home. And by reducing VOCs at home, you can begin to create a healthier indoor environment that supports your health and your wellness at home. You guys, thank you for joining me this week. Um, I hope that you were able to take some sort of useful information away from this. And I hope that you're able to make a change in your house to improve the indoor air quality and limit VOCs inside your home. Um, It'll be beneficial for you and your family, and it will help you to continue to build this building block of a healthy home that supports your lifestyle and your health and wellness. Until next week, I hope you're well. 